Are you looking to create eye-catching animations? I made this video to show how Python and Adobe's After Effects tools can be combined to create a time slice through a video. I hope you enjoy it. In this section, we create an animation from existing images. We start development with some basic housekeeping. The first two lines document the Python version I used to create this tutorial. You may need to add the OpenCV library. These are the lines that install the library using pip. I've got them commented out since I've already installed it. If you have Anaconda installed, then you need to use that installer. These lines import the libraries used by this project. These lines define the prefix for the existing image file names and determine the name for the time slice animation that the code will create. Next, we define the column of pixels we want to extract and animate over time. With housekeeping and definitions done, we start creating the animation. The process begins by reading in the existing image file name. We've read the first image and its properties. You can use the open CV message method imshow to display the image in the notebook. Next, use the properties of this first image to create a new blank image. This blank image serves as the repository for the individual time slices. These lines of code create the video file for the existing animation image, and these lines create the video file for the time slice animation. These loops create the animated video files. The outer loop iterates over in rep and adds repeats to the animation. This is useful for animations that complete a cycle such as this one. The inner loop processes each animation image. The loop begins by reading in the animation image. We want to arrange the animation and time slice in a cube format. To make that look realistic and engaging, we want to have the pixels in our time base shift to the right with each frame. The three lines of code provide the shift for the RGB values in the image. These lines of code copy the pixel column from the animation image to the time slice frame. With the time slice frame created, this line of code adds it to the time slice animation. Show the final frame in our time slice animation to check the code did as we wanted. That looks pretty good. And lastly, we want to close out the video file since all of our tasks are complete. With the animation complete, let's take a look at them. The code has output two animations. The first is ball animation AVI, which can contains the animation for the existing frames. The animation runs a little slowly, but you can increase speed when you edit it. The code also created the ball time base AVI with a video time slice. You'll combine these two animations to create that rotating cube effect in the next section of the video. We're going to start by opening a new project. In addition to the animations you already created, you're going to need a 1000 by 1000 gray image to use for the cube top. Import this gray image and the two animations into the project. Great. The sequence construction begins by adding a null object to the scene. This null object is going to serve as the parent for all of our animations and the top. Set all three elements, the two animations in the gray bottom, to parent to the null object. You can do that by grabbing those swirly things and dragging them over, or you can use this pull down here. For the animation to look good, the right half of the bouncing balls have to be cropped. We can do that by adding a rectangular mask and sweeping it across. This mass will gradually expose over two seconds, so we're going to start off with it as big as the image is, and then bring it back to the midpoint. So we're going to enable an animation, set this at about the two second level, add another keyframe, and change that shape. Next, we're going to change the composition settings so that we have a 1920 by 1080. We're also going to change the null object so it's scaled at 50%. This gives room for the cube to rotate. Next, we want to enable 3D. That's this little box here for all the objects. And we want to set our active camera to custom view 3. This will give us a 3D look at this scene. We're going to focus on that time scale animation. So we'll go to the transform, set the Y angle to 270, and the Z position to 500. It's a little hard to see with the gray there, but we've got that in about the right position. Next, we're going to put the top on. We're also going to click Transform. This one's going to have a minus 90 degree rotation about the x-axis. The y position goes to minus 500 and the z position to 500. It's in place, but it's too large, so we're going to have to add a rectangular mask to that object as well. Now that we have those views set, we're going to switch to the default camera view. And lastly, we'll add those keyframes that we need in that null object to achieve that rotation. 
In this example, the assembly rotates 90 degrees about the y-axis and 22 and a half degrees about the x-axis over six seconds. So we're going to add a keyframe, slide down here a couple seconds, put this at 22.5, and we'll put the y at 45. That's about halfway through the rotation for us. Go down another few seconds and complete the rotation. So that keyframe gets 90 degrees. Take a look at how this animation plays. And we've got our time slice. You can see the pixel history unwind here as the animation plays. It's done. You learned how to edit and create animations in Python. Then you use these animations in Adobe After Effects to create a rotating view through a video. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.